Hello, and welcome to UAN Governmental Fund Accounting 101. In this video, we're covering the Uniform Chart of Accounts, Chapter 3 of 3. Additional chapters in this series were Introduction to the Fund Accounting and Maintaining Cash and Fund Balances. Let's begin. Please remember that UAN support personnel are not permitted to assist you with selecting fund or account numbers. We always have to refer you to local government services. Do not refer to this fund accounting training as a resource for selecting correct fund or accounts. You should always refer to the most recent version of the chart of accounts when adding new items. Old printed copies may be out of date. The Uniform Chart of Accounts is used to maintain the separation of money by fund, monitor the budget, and filter data to the correct position on the annual financial report. Village, Township, and Library Chart of Accounts are different. Special districts are assigned to either the Village or Township Chart of Accounts. The Uniform Chart of Accounts is made up of fund numbers, revenue accounts, and appropriation accounts. The fund number establishes the fund as a specific type. The revenue and appropriation numbers used for each fund maintain the budget and filter data to the proper place on the annual financial report. The first layer of understanding the chart of accounts has to be making a selection from the correct type. Let's discuss this further. Fund numbers are assigned based on fund type. There are three categories of funds, governmental, proprietary, and fiduciary. Within each of these categories are more specific fund types. Within fund types are fund numbers and names that are unique to village, township, and libraries. It's important for you to understand the different categories and types of funds. They have different functions and restrictions. Revenue accounts classify revenue by the source type, which is meaningful on the annual financial report. What makes up a revenue account? The fund number plus a three-digit revenue code is your revenue account. All revenue codes belong to a revenue type. On the screen, you see the revenue types that belong to the Township Chart of Accounts. Within each of these categories are revenue codes. It is important to understand the differences in the revenue types and to select a revenue code from the correct type. Here are the revenue types that belong to the Village Chart of Accounts, and within each of these categories are more specific revenue codes. Note that there are two intergovernmental types on the Village Chart. The revenue codes that belong to these intergovernmental categories represent very different revenue. You would have to read the descriptions for the revenue codes within both categories to find the correct revenue code. And now on the screen are the revenue types that belong to the library chart of accounts. Again, within each of these categories are more specific revenue codes. Appropriation accounts are used to classify expenditures. An appropriation account begins with a fund number, has a three-digit program code, and a three-digit object code. Let's explore the program types. Appropriation program codes describe a service area provided by the entity. It is very important to select program codes from the correct program type. On the screen, you see the program types that belong to the township chart of accounts and within each of these types are program codes. These are the program types that belong to the village chart of account. Within each of these types are individual program codes. And finally, these are the program types that belong to the library chart of accounts. Within each of these types there are program codes. You can see that the library program types are very different from township and village. The last group of numbers in an appropriation account is the object code. Object codes represent the purpose of the expenditure. As with fund, revenue, and program codes, there are object types. On the screen, you see the object types that belong to the township chart of accounts. Within each of these types are object codes. 
When I'm selecting an object code, I look at the object types and select the object code from the correct type. For wages, I would select an object account from the salaries type. The employer share of Medicare, retirement, and other employee benefits would be selected from the benefits type. When I'm paying for a service such as repairs, utilities, or audit, I make the object selection from the purchase services type. The purchase of supplies would use object codes in the supplies and materials category. Note the other object type. This type should only be used when none of the other object types apply. This would be rare. Capital outlay object codes should always be paired with a capital outlay program code and they're only used for capital outlay. Debt service object codes are always used to pay debt payments. Other financing uses groups a range of items together that are not part of the normal operating expenses, such as the receipt of loan money, interfund transfers, and interfund advances. Here are the object types that belong to the village chart of accounts, and within each of these types are object codes. The categories are almost the same as the township chart of accounts. Salaries and purchase services on the township chart are known as personal services and contractual services on the village chart, but the meaning is still clear. Personal services on the village chart of account refers to wages and contractual services refers to object accounts used when you pay for a service such as repairs, utilities, or audit. Again, the other type should only be used when an item doesn't fit into one of the specific object types. This would be rare. Now on the screen we see the object types that belong to the library chart of accounts. The descriptions are slightly different but still easy enough to determine which category to select. Within each of these types are specific object codes. And once again the other category should only be used when an item doesn't fit into one of the specific object types. Now we understand that the fund, revenue, and appropriation program and object numbers must be selected from the correct type. This is where most fiscal officers go wrong when selecting a fund or account. We know that each fund has its own set of revenue and appropriation accounts. The combination of fund and revenue code is a revenue account. And the combination of fund, program, and object code make up an appropriation account. When absolutely necessary, UAN users can add another layer to this structure. A cost center is a UAN enhancement that consists of a four-digit number at the end of a revenue or appropriation account, and it's used to subdivide account codes. Cost center numbers and their names are user-defined. That means you create them at your entity. An entity such as a library, cemetery, or fire department may want to track finances separately for different locations. Adding a cost center for each of the locations would allow revenue and appropriation accounts to be designated by location. Our picture illustrates a main site with four additional locations. This could represent multiple cemeteries, fire stations, or library branch location. Using a cost center for each location means that every revenue and appropriation account and their budgets are separated by location. Cost centers added by location would make what was once originally budgeted to one appropriation account into five different appropriation accounts with the budget divided among them. This extreme expansion of the accounts and division of the budget by multiple locations can be very difficult to manage and is overwhelming with a small budget the fiscal officer would be constantly adjusting appropriations between locations to prepare purchase orders and post payments. Cost centers are not self-balancing. They don't subdivide the cash within a fund. Once you go down the cost center road, you will probably regret the decision. It may be better to track these items by a separate spreadsheet rather than try to divide the budget to this extreme level. Do not use cost centers as a way to avoid properly converting your old chart of accounts to the uniform chart of accounts. The uniform chart of account numbers filter items to the correct position on the annual financial report. Cost centers have nothing to do with it. 
The use of a cost center on appropriation accounts for wages always creates complications in the payroll setup and are never recommended for this purpose. Call the UAN support line to discuss cost center usage before adding them to your software. 99% of the time, you don't need and should not use a cost center. Let's review what you've learned about the Uniform Chart of Accounts in Chapter 3. Fund numbers must be selected from the correct type. Revenue numbers must be selected from the correct revenue type. Appropriation program and object codes must be selected from the correct type. I think I've emphasized how important the types are within the Uniform Chart of Account. And remember, this is where most fiscal officers make the wrong selection. And last, cost centers are often misused. Call UAN to discuss before setting them up. You may save yourself a lot of extra work. This concludes Fund Accounting 101, Chapter 3. The next course is UAN Fund Accounting 102, Chapter 1.